Olene once again, and sadly regards to all who care and dare to listen. I'm here on the 2nd of December, 2022, to tell you something about the state that you're in, the state of your presumed reality. Now, it might be clear by now to some people to some tads out there, that a good part of what I say and teach, or try to teach, comes from my experiences in what I call experimental mysticism, which is just a fancy way to describe explorations of the paranormal and the supernatural. And of course, you may have noticed that the way I talk about those phenomena, which is entirely based on direct experience and not theory, is different from the way that others might use those terms, paranormal, supernatural, psychic phenomena, or altered states, also called non-ordinary reality. So I have devoted a lot of my life to the exploration of non-ordinary reality. And one conclusion that I can draw from that is that you are living already in non-ordinary reality. But what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that you are living in a state of awakened and enlightened awareness which evades you. The true nature of it, the true dynamic of it, evades you. And that happens for two reasons. One, because you are not provided, excuse me, passive voice, because it so happens that no one tells you about the non-ordinary reality that you are already in. And the second reason is due to the fact that there is interference in your ability to conceive, perceive, and directly experience the non-ordinary reality that you are already living. So my intention in this talk is to clarify this matter to the best of my ability. You may have noticed that recently I had a conversation with Per Shapiro in Sweden about the trendy topic of simulation. And I pointed out in that talk that I consider that those who are claiming we are living in a simulation such as David Icke, Elon Musk, uh, who is the founder of simulation theory, I don't know, someone called Nick Bostrom, and many, many others, including the authors of a recent article in Scientific American, which is neither scientific nor American, I pointed out that, for instance, David Icke has contributed enormously to the exposure of the evil tactics of deceit, gaslighting, propaganda that have been perpetrated on this planet going on several centuries now. And insofar as his research in that area as an independent investigator are evidence-based, they're quite valid. But when it comes to talking about other dimensions or the paranormal or altered states, I don't see that any of these characters have the qualifications to speak about those matters. Qualifications are simply to have been there, to have gone there, to have done that, to explain how you go to the supernatural how you enter an altered state, 
how you navigate it, what you find there, how you come back, and what you come back with, which is something that I have done extensively. So I do make the claim of being in a singular and outstanding category of teacher in that respect. And you can take it or leave it. But whether you believe or wish to play along with what I say about my experiences in experimental mysticism, it stands as a testimony of one man's experience. And if it benefits you, great. That is my intention. That is always my intention to benefit you. So in this talk, I want to return to the subject of the mysteries. Now the mysteries, capital M, is a vague term in scholarship, and it refers to some kind of cultic activity that was performed in ancient times. But in fact, the record shows that scholars who investigate the mysteries don't really know what happened there because those who participated in the mysteries didn't leave evidence, or if they did leave evidence, which I believe they did, it has been destroyed or suppressed. So I stand before you today as a representative of the mysteries, talking today as those teleste in the past, those Gnostic masters might have spoken to you in that time and setting. So I speak about what was learned, what was to be learned and discovered in the mysteries. And I attempt to bring it into a context that is relevant and instructive in a contemporary way. Now, first of all, I would have you note that in presenting myself as a modern representative of the mysteries, a Gnostic living today, I constantly emphasize the central truth of the mysteries, the great revelation, and that is the presence of Sophia, the wisdom goddess. And so I, I believe it must be clear that Everyone else, as far as I know, who's talking about other dimensions or the paranormal or non-ordinary states of reality excludes that factor. Why? It's a central factor in the Gnostic materials that survive. The presence and predominance of the Aeon Sophia is central to Gnostic mythology, and I have revived that mythology in the fallen goddess scenario. So this is one point I make. I'll put it in the form of a question. How can anyone cite the Gnostic materials, for instance, in support of simulation theory and the concept of the matrix, and not talk about the divine Sophia, your divine mother, who is embodied in the living planet, in which you participate as a cell. You are a living cell in the planetary body of the Aeonic Mother. How come they don't talk about that? Well, I don't know and I don't care. I'm bringing up the mysteries in order to bring your attention to one paramount truth. I assure you, my friends, strangers whom I'll never meet, I assure you that if you know this truth, it is the foundation to know many, many things, and not merely occult or esoteric things, but things that are essential to your life as a sentient being on this planet, things that are essential to living the self-intending life and to pursuing what I now call the Thelian way of life. So what is this essential and paramount truth? You can see where I have 
stated it explicitly in chapter 16 of Nod in His Image called A Sheaf of Cut Wheat. And there I cite the ancient testimony. Quote, the heresy hunter Hippolytus reported a striking eyewitness detail from the mysteries that has baffled scholars through the ages. At the moment the initiates emerged from their encounter with the mystery light, the hierophant who led the ceremony showed them, quote, a sheaf of cut wheat, end quote. This action was considered to be, quote, citing Hippolytus, the great and marvelous mystery of the ultimate revelation, end quote. And that comes from Refutation of All Heresies, Book 5, Section 28. That is the surviving ancient testimony about the ultimate secret of the mysteries, which is the ultimate secret of what you consider to be your ordinary state of reality. Now, I've stated the secret, which is no longer a secret. It's an open secret. Many times in various ways. I'm going to state it for you right now, once and for all, in the clearest possible way. The supernatural agency, which is the living intelligence of the earth itself, that gives you the perception of the world and yourself and body within it, gives it to you externally, but in such a way that it arises for you as if it were your own production internally. And I might add emphatically that that is not an illusion. It's simply a way in which the source of your life reveals itself to you so that you can own the perception of being alive, having a self, as if you produced it internally. Therefore, you can work with it. You can be autonomous. But nevertheless, the ultimate truth is that your perception of yourself right now as a conscious self, as well as your perception of your body and the perception of the environment in which you find yourself is constantly and perpetually given to you externally by an external agency in such a way that it appears to be your internal and subjective event. So that event that you are in, which you call your life, having a body, being an animal able to perceive and sense the world, that event is in fact an altered state. And what I have discovered in my exploration of the supernatural and the paranormal by going deliberately into altered states, navigating through them, gathering intel and returning with it, what I have discovered is that this state that we are in has a problem. There is another condition. If you can accept that your perception of the world comes to you from the agency that supports the world, that is to say nature. Your perception of the world comes to you from nature as if it were your own arising within. If you can accept that, then I invite you to consider the description of two vectors. You have two vectors coming into you which project upon you and within you, the totality of your sense of what is real. One of those vectors 
is the vector that comes from the living intelligence of the earth. The other vector comes from something that Castaneda called, what did he say? Extraneous forces. So there are two forces, two force vectors beaming in on you all the time. One of those vectors directs you to the supernatural and paranormal reality of life. And the other vector tries to misdirect you toward a simulation and a deviation from that immediate primordial perception, which is true, accurate, and totally materially and sensorially real. So the title of this talk is, You Are Living in an Altered State. Altered States, put it in quotes, is the name of a movie. It's also a term that became popular in the 60s due to certain people who were experimenting in their way at that time, not in the tradition and discipline of the mysteries, experimenting with altered states such as in isolation tanks, the use of LSD, and other mind-altering substances. So, you are already in an altered state. You are already in a condition where your psyche and mind are naturally and innately disposed to have psychic experiences, so-called. It is your mother's source that is the origin of those psychic experiences. Nature is the origin of those psychic experiences. But the problem, even though everyone has them, and I've often said this, from childhood you have these experiences. There's not a single person living on this earth, except perhaps a certain proportion, an imaginary number of the population who have an IQ of 85 or lower, who has not experienced altered states and psychic phenomena, but they come with the challenge to handle them correctly, you see? So you have an incoming force vector. It's a force vector coming right into you from the natural body of the earth, directing you to the source of your life. And you have another vector coming in from the angle of the archons or the extraneous forces. Now I've said a lot about the archons, of course, and I can boil it all down today to a very simple proposition. In any circumstance and in any degree where you find yourself dependent upon IT, you are in the archontic matrix. If you use an, a smartphone to run your life, to communicate with people, if you refer to social media to find out what's going on in the world, if you listen to the propaganda coming from the mainstream media and a lot of bad propaganda coming as well from the opposition media, so-called, you are in the archontic matrix. There's nothing mysterious about it. You're in the world of simulation. You're in the world of simulation listening to me now because you're not hearing my voice, are you? You're hearing a replication of my voice. And so simulation means replication. But as I said in my critique of simulation theory, you cannot have replication without having the original. You cannot have a recording of my voice like you're listening to now without having the original agency and material instrument of my voice. Isn't that clear? So the archontic matrix is very real. And although it has a paranormal and extraterrestrial source, it is manifesting in all kinds of obvious and ordinary ways. Any dependence whatsoever on IT 
devices of simulation places you under the force vector of those extraneous forces. Whereas your direct experience of your own body and all its natural functions, including its pleasure function, its ability to feel pain, its ability to use the five senses or more, all of that belongs to the natural matrix of the aeonic mother. And from the aeonic mother, from the planet, not somewhere beyond the planet, from the planet, you experience the incoming vector of her forces that draw you and hold you in an altered state. And you can be in an altered state in ordinary reality. I guarantee you, I'm in such a condition all the time. So if you look at me and watch me, if you were in my presence in 4D, you would see that I just act like an ordinary person. But at the same time, I am in a non-ordinary state of consciousness. Why? Because I am directly aware of the incoming force vector of the power source of everything that lives in the natural world. And you can be too. That is the practice of planetary tantra. There's a practice for achieving that state of direct and immediate attentiveness and interaction with the force vector coming from your source. Clear enough? Now, finally, in wrapping up this talk, <clears throat> I'd like to make two more points. There's a term from psychiatric studies which is becoming trendy. It's becoming en vogue lately. And there are a couple of versions of this term, but one of them is, let's see, mass psychogenic illness, MPI. I believe the variation of that term, which started to come into the exopsyche, which is a fancy word for the realm of things that can be discussed uh, openly in public, um, mass entrainment psychosis. Well, you see, that's it. That's the definition. That's the description of what happens to human reality due to the force vector of the extraneous archontic influence. You see? Now we are at the end of Kali Yuga and one of the obvious, undeniable effects of this period of time we're going through is that mass numbers of people in the world are succumbing to mass psychogenic illness. Why? Because they are allowing themselves to live in the virtual with the support of IT technology. Do you really think, here we are in the year 2022, unreal, unbelievable, but do you really think that human beings in the past could not have lived without virtual IT technology? Certainly we did. And as far as I can tell, we did fairly well with it. So why can't we live without it now? Well, those who hold power and who rely on the illusions of power would like you to believe that you can't live without it. But I say to you that as long as you participate in IT virtual reality, you are submitting yourself to a deviant altered state. So you have two clear choices. Be in the altered state that arises from the force vector coming from the intelligence of the earth or be in the other one. And if you choose to be in the other one and rely on it, 
you're gone. You're gone from the reality of life on this planet. Second point I want to make, I will make by directing your attention to the thumbnail for this talk. There you have a line drawing, which is a rendering of a bas relief from one of the mystery schools of ancient Greece. And it shows the goddess Demeter on the left, pulling up from the earth, the divine child, whose name is Iachos. And the divine child is nothing other than you, born from the womb of nature, the magical child of the wisdom goddess. You are Iachos. And the revelation of the true identity of the human species was the central teaching of the ancient mysteries, and I've continued it today. To the right of the goddess Demeter is the figure called Kekrops, a serpent man. That is the image of a Telestes, or a Gnostic initiate, and they were called serpents because they found the source of their power and knowledge in the great serpent power of the earth itself, which is called in Sanskrit, Mahakundala. So when you are wired and bonded to Mahakundala, then you are comparable to that initiate. Kekrops is not the name of an individual, but it was the hieratic title, the honorary title of one of the families that guarded the Eleusinian mysteries. And what do you see Kekrops doing? Well, look closely. With his left hand, he is clutching a sheaf of wheat. And with his right hand, he is making the gesture of a finger to his lips, which is the gesture of mystery initiation. The word mystery comes from the Greek verb muain, which means to murmur or talk softly. Why talk softly? Well, it is a fact, a proven fact, not only proven by myself, but others, that when you are in the presence in an altered state of the radiance of the earth, the earth is a radiant body, and when you are in the presence directly of that mystery light or organic light, you cannot sustain the ecstatic thrill of being there if you exclaim or speak loudly. This is a simple fact. It's mechanical. And so the mystery teachers knew that this gesture of the finger to the lips communicated the very essence of their paranormal experience. It did then, and it does now as well. Finally, I would say that there is absolutely no doubt whatsoever that genuine initiates who were not deviant and deluded in ancient times used the power of psychotropic plants to enter altered states. And I've done this many times. And I've described firsthand what I experienced. And I don't find that kind of firsthand testimony coming from anyone else who's talking about simulation or higher dimensions. Do you? In any case, there it is for what it's worth. But I want to point out to you that the time you are living right now and the coming moments ahead, and they're coming fast, is a unique time in the entire history of our species. It is a moment when those who are so disposed and those who have the description for it and the intelligence to grasp it can experience the reality of altered states without the use of those sacred plant allies. You don't have to use them to go into an altered state. I'm telling you, you're already in an altered state. And so, that being so, the great secret of the mysteries is now an open secret. 
I don't think you would be surprised if I tell you something that many others have said, those who know nothing of the mysteries of the living Gnosis today, have said that there is a massive psyop happening on this planet. The enemies of life, the psychotic criminals, the demented proxies of the archons are committing a massive psyop, which has many, many dimensions. The Koviet deception, 9-11, climate change. These are aspects of this psyop. And that being so, it's fair to say that you are all targeted by the force vector of the archons to be in a mind control psyop. But that's only one side of the story. That's only one side of what's happening to humanity today. On the other hand, I can tell you for sure that you are in a mind revelation moment. The PSYOP is actually the occasion for snapping out of the delusion, snapping out of the archontic trance, and realizing what the true miracle of being alive is really about. So you don't have to be a victim. You are a target. I am a target. We're all targets, unless we're on the end of the perpetrators, and they, in their own way, are targets. And it's becoming more and more clear that their psychosis is taking them down. But you don't have to be a victim of mass psychogenic illness, and you don't have to feel compassion or the least bit of concern for anyone who is. All you have to do, if you want to, is look after yourself and look at what you really have and realize that this moment is the epic turning point, not only in your life as an individual, but in the life of the human species as a whole. Enough said, and I'll be seeing you in the beauty to come.